If you do have any information on William and where his whereabouts is, please call Crime Stoppers. I'll leave their number here and their website. There is a million dollar reward out still to try and find him. Hopefully this video also brings awareness to people that don't know about it, whether they're in a different country or they're just so remote that they don't hear about things. And he deserves to be home with his mother and his older sister and his two younger brothers. Hey guys, it's Olivia aka Olives and welcome back to my channel. If you can tell by the title, today's video is a like, little investigation on what happened to William Terrell. One of the most like well-known cases in Australia at the moment and it's still currently going on. So yeah, basically I'm just going to explain what happens and then I'll get to what my theory is on the whole investigation basically. I did one of these on Relisha Rudd, she was a young American girl. I will link that down below if you wanted to watch that as well. Let's just get on with the video. So a little bit of background information, he was born on the 26th of June um, in 2011 and at the time that he went missing he was three years old. He was in foster care when he went missing. He was Placed in foster care at nine months old, I'm pretty sure. Australia didn't know that he was in foster care until last year, I'm pretty sure. So we were under belief that his foster parents, but when like the whole when he went missing, we thought he was those were his real parents. He has one sister, and that one sister was living with him with the foster parents. And then he also has two younger brothers with his biological mother, but we'll all get into that later on. Now for the timeline and the series of events, whatever you want to call it, of his investigation, I guess you could call it. On the 11th of September 2014, so this was a Thursday, William and his older sister both picked up early from daycare as a last minute decision to go on a family trip up to their foster grandparents house in Kendall, New South Wales. September the 12th, 2014 is the day that William went missing. He was playing out with his little sister out the front in the... 60 minutes segment his foster mother reckons that she heard him like making these tiger noises playing daddy tiger or whatever she called it and then she just didn't hear the tiger noise at all and then she made this triple o call and the i guess investigation started from there she stated that her and her mother i think it was her mother it was either her mother or her partner's mother but anyway the grandmother and her were trying to look for them for 20 minutes and then she states in the call that she was trying to look for them and that he couldn't find they couldn't find him and so forth and then so that's when the investigation began um so yeah he lives in ben he was at benenoon drive at his grandmother's house the next day new south wales police and 200 volunteers from both the community ses are in the town of kendall trying to look for william and kendall is a uh, like People will now know about it because of this, but it is quite a small town, if that makes sense. On the 14th, so two days after, the search continues. Um, but this time they're looking around bushes around the house because that street is like, like like acreages and stuff. So there's a lot of bush land around. And then they started to look in like waterways and whatnot as well. Um, the search continues on the 15th of September 2014 with New South Wales Police, SES, members of the community, the Royal, F the Rural Fire Service, um, and specialised police from the Sex Crime Squad, Form Strike Force, Roseanne, um, talk to local residents to try and find some information, see if they know anything, as police officers do. On the 16th, perimeter that they were searching gets extended another three kilometres and hope to find William. After five days since William went missing, the police are unable to come up with any leads. Police said that it was no longer possible for William to be alive if he went walking in the bush. On the 20th of September 2014, William's parents issued a letter of thanks to everyone for 
helping. On the 21st of September 2014, nine days after William went missing, emergency services started to focus on many pieces of information received since his unexplained disappearance. So the no what they know when he was like since his disappearance is that he was in a Spider-Man costume, two piece. So they were looking for like any piece of clothing like that, any toys, whether it be Spider-Man or something like that. Just anything that a three-year-old would have. On the 6th of January 2015, Commander of the Mid-North Coast Region Superintendent Paul Venon, I probably pronounced that wrong, so sorry, denied reports investigators were treating this case as a targeted, targeted abduction. And then on the 20th of... January 2015, forensic team searched the home of tradesman, tradesman William Harry Spedding, also known as Bill Spedding, um, who was understood to have given a quote to William's grandmother's house four days before he disappeared. A number of items were seized from his house and the septic tank was also drained. Police also had search, had a search warrant for a Lorrington pawn shop which is 15 minutes away from Candle which was believed to be run by Bill Spedding. On the 19th of February 2015 New South Wales Police investigating the case asked for anyone with within a kilometre of the area on the day of William's disappearance to come forward with any information that they have. On March 2nd 2015 the homicide squad began a new search in the body of William in a dense bushland at Bonnie Hills off the Pacific Highway after a tip-off from a member of the public. Police searched for his body and a further evidence about 20 kilometres from where William was lost, last seen in an area around Houston Mitchell Drive and Long Point Road. On April 17, 2015, New South Wales Police revealed they were investigating reports of a pedophile ring operating in the area where William disappeared after the toddler's parents spoke publicly for the first time, making an emotional plea for his return. Detective Superintendent Michael Willing said police were pursuing reports of a pedophile ring operating in the area. In a pre-recorded message distributed through to the police, his mother said he, she wanted William to be safe and alive. Mind you, at the moment, when they're saying his mother, his mother, his mother, this is the foster mother because the public uh, did not know that he was in foster care at this point in time. In June 11, 2015, newspaper reports said that a Spider-Man toy was found in the work van of a person of interest, which is Bill Spedding. During investigations into William's disappearance, New South Wales Police couldn't confirm the discovery or comment on anything to say police continue to appeal for anyone with information that may assist with this case as you would you need as much information as possible because in the new south wales um system you're innocent until proven guilty unlike in the american system you're guilty until proven innocent on june 26 2015 another appeal was made by new south wales police as 26 of june is his birthday um, so this was his fourth birthday on the 26th of june and he still hadn't been found um the 7th of Dece September 2015, police appealed for info about two cars described as a dark grey old model medium sized sedan and also an old white station wagon. These two cars were parked across the house. Police want to identify the grey station wagon that drove past the driveway where William and his sister were riding their bikes before his disappearance. Officers said they want to identify also a four wheel drive that was seen speeding in the vicinity of Benaroo drive shortly after William went missing. On September 12th 2015 it's been one year since William went missing and also a walk was done to create awareness um, about William's disappearance and one person in Canada also participated in this walk. That's how I know it got to Canada so whether it's gone worldwide elsewhere I don't know. I hope it has just so everyone's aware of it. September 15th 2015 um, criminal profiler Dr. Sarah Yule from um, Police Task Force working with detectives to find William reveals details about the person police suspect may have abducted the toddler. She says this kidnapping was opportunistic. I've I stuffed that. I can't say sophisticated words, okay? Um, it was one of those crimes and no one but the parents and grandmother knew about the visit so the kidnapper, kidnapper had to be there for a different reason. 
September 26, 2015, police confirmed they have seized a white station wagon for forensics examination from a property in Walhope, north of Kendall. September 12, 2016, so a whole year later, on the second anniversary of William's disappearance, the New South Wales government announced a million dollar reward for information on where William's whereabouts is. This is the largest reward known in New South Wales history. Um, on the 4th of March 2018, Channel 7 revealed William's biological mother for the first time on their show Sunday night. Carly Tyrrell, which is William's biological mother, says that the foster parents should feel guilty for what they have done, even if they weren't the reason as to why this happened. Now we get to my theory. This is where the juicy part happens. Some people might have a similar theory to me. Some people might not. I'm just getting straight into it, going harsh, going fast. Um, I think that the foster parents are guilty for the big, like, as to why this has all happened. Basically, how does one child who's also playing out the front with his older sister only get abducted and not the other? If they were a pedophile, a true pedophile, they would have taken both if they had the chance. If that's just my opinion and when you're a pedophile you're quite sophisticated on how to take children multiple children as well um, I think the pot the foster parents sold him to a pedophile re reason why is because in a small town like um, Kendall you would have to know about who the pedophiles are and whereabouts they are and whatnot because you're in a small town like that like come on I reckon Bill Spedding is the first person to have taken him um, because in the 60 Minutes interview, William's foster mother said that she rings Will Spedding for, ah, uh, not Will, Bill Spedding for um, a quote, like to see if he was coming over to fix the washing machine. He has a van, but he could have used that van as a different thing. When it's the person's daughter that rings on behalf of the mother, your instinct kind of goes, oh, maybe they're there at the house. And if this person's close to the family in whatever way, he would know that um, the foster mother has William and the um, daughter as well. In the 60 Minutes episode as well, it's known that Bill Spedding has um, a history of um, child sex offence offences. When uh, the interviewer from 60 Minutes asks if the foster mother thinks that Bill Spedding could have been a possible, like could have known that William was coming there, she says that she doesn't know but anything is possible. That just, that's an odd statement to make in my opinion but that's just me anyway. And the way that I see it, like with only one child being adopted out of the two, it's like as if they wanted to get rid of William in a way. That's sad to say, I know. But like I said before, how do you only go after one and not two? And like with the little girl, she would have had to see like them taking her, if that makes sense. And what I don't get either is like, yeah, the foster father may have had bad reception, However, how could he be gone this long period of time? And there was no report saying that he came back as soon as the foster mother found out that he was missing as well. So I just don't get that either. I reckon the foster father took a call to go tell Bill Spedding that he's left the house and that William is in prime position to be taken or something like that. I don't know. It's just, it's so messed up. How can a child just vanish out of nowhere? Like, it has to be planned by them. But yeah. The two cars that were on the other side of the road, this is one of the one of the suspicious things about this whole case. They were parked on the side of the road. Now when you live when you live on acreages like that, you just you park on the property close to the house. That's just what people do. It's not like a regular suburban where there's just house after house after house and you have to park on the on the street. So I feel like these two cars were a part of a backup for Bill Spedig. One car would have had um, Paul Bigford and the other car having Tony Jones as these were both, these were two other people that were persons of interest in this case as they were two other people that are on the sex offender list in 
near around Kendall um, and there's 20 something people on the sex offenders list that are in surrounding areas of Kendall. With the third car being the four wheel drive that sped off, I feel like Mr. Spedding could have been in that car and potentially William's foster father was in that car as well just potentially otherwise it would have been someone else driving that car and when you see a little kid that's three years old in a spider-man costume it's so easy just to go up to them and be like hey spider-man i've got lollies in my car or hey spider-man do you want to come check out and fight batman or something like that and a three-year-old's gonna be like yep done i'm the coolest kid ever i also think that the foster family is guilty and selling him to a pedophile ring because they had 700 over seven hundred thousand dollars worth of renovations done to their house they did get approved before he all went missing however i feel like even though they got him approved you wouldn't have had this much money and got him done so quick in such a short time frame i understand that they would have been a well-off family However, they wouldn't have had this much money. Unless they win, won the lotto or they just want to choose to live in debt, which I really doubt because they just lost the child. I reckon they've sold into the pedophile ring and got X amount of money to help them with the renovations and get that extra money to get the process on the roll. Another reason why I think this was all planned is because this is where the juicy part happens. So I'm in this Facebook group called the World Society of Girls and... A post got brought up about William wondering where he was and like what everyone's theories were because of his missing, like him being missing and Sunday night doing their um, segment. Screenshots were revealed of William's missing Facebook page. William didn't go missing until September 12th, 2014. This page was created on June 25th, 2014. So three months before William was abducted. This page has since then been edited to the correct date of September 2012. However, I don't believe that you would have been on Facebook that night you would have been you should have been out searching for your son the first post that was created for that page was on june 25th and then the second post was created on june 26th saying that he went missing on september 12th that's just messed up and they their reasoning was oh um it was a mistake but it's all been fixed how can you have a mistake from a post before it like of an event that before it even happens like beg that he's still alive because he deserves to be alive he was an innocent little boy he had a future ahead of him but a child just doesn't go missing out of nowhere like with no evidence no like trace nothing it just doesn't make sense as do many other people in Australia, I hope he's safe and hope he's well. But if it does come out that his foster parents are the ones to blame and for setting this up, you're not going to wish that you were alive anymore because you're going to have every person in Australia after you wishing that you were dead, basically. Because, yeah, you've just ruined a little boy's life for no reason but to satisfy your own if that's why you wanted to get the house renovations done and have money because he doesn't go missing out of nowhere if you do have any information on william and where his whereabouts is please call crime crime stoppers i'll leave their number here and their website there is a million dollar reward out still to try and find him okay guys that is it for this week's video if you want me to do more mysteries like this let me know down below in the comment section below that is it for this video so i'll see you when i next upload